Good morning, welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, April 26, 2024. Just kind of following up on the live chat from last night, because we did touch on some of the little features trying to develop in the tropical Atlantic. And one of the features we were watching is this one right here. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not expecting any type of development, but, but, I am very interested in April that we had the attempted development of a warm core low, not somewhere on the East Coast off of a cold front or a, a little weak disturbance around, let's say, southern Florida, but way out in the eastern Atlantic, already trying to get its act together. But because of the dry air and the interaction with the polar air mass that dropped in from the central Atlantic, that pretty much got destroyed so we don't have any concern of any type of development but the key thing that has my attention is that this attempted development was starting to take place in the eastern atlantic right around the cape to the northeast of the cape Verde islands and, and it's something that um i am certainly going to be keeping an eye on the rest of the tropical atlantic as you would expect from this time of year is quiet the intertropical convergence zone, which is set up well to the south of where it normally is in the summer, which you would expect, is certainly showing some activity and some uh, nice uh, convection, but no development as one would expect. And then you have your shear out here towards the Caribbean. But the reason why we are keeping an eye on this is that there are a lot of climatological features are showing up here that certainly has a lot of meteorologists paying attention for this upcoming year and i'm trying to be very very careful in not producing hyperbolic statements and i'm sure you've seen them all over social media so when i look at this evolution of our La Nina starting to gain ground. We've been watching this for months now. The very strong El Nino rapidly collapsing. And now signs of cold water below normal temperatures showing up throughout Nino 1 plus 2. And starting to creep into Nino 3. So we're starting to see the development. Meanwhile, as we have have discussed, the Northern Pacific is featuring at negative PDO. Okay, negative PDO is when we start to get cold water along the west coast here and up towards the Gulf of Alaska and very warm water here in the central and uh, western Pacific. Now, when you start to see this all play out, this combination leads to a trough in the west and a ridge in the southeast that can build up to the mid-Atlantic and lead to rather toasty weather conditions once we get into the summer but it also means that it reduces the amount of shear in the atlantic shear is bad for tropical systems by the way in case you don't know so it produces a more favorable environment in the atlantic and the atlantic is very very warm so why am i not uh advertising uh historic or you know insane high amounts of tropical activity well for one key factor is that the sahara desert is pumping a lot of dust out into the atlantic it does impact whether or not we see that development so we need to see that i agree that it looks like we're heading for an above normal season and so as a result i would suggest that anyone that is from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into New England should prepare with reasonable actions. Make sure you have fresh batteries. Make sure you have plenty of stored water. Make sure you have food, canned foods. And make sure you know where to evacuate. And that this isn't anything where you need to rush out of the store like right this second. But prepare have a plan in place now so when the atlantic does get rather active you will not be overly concerned and 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 getting panicked 
Okay, so that's what we want to stay away from. We want to stay away from panic because panic leads to stupidity. And we don't want stupidity. We want calmness and we want a plan so we know what to do and how to get get to it. So the Atlantic is certainly looking rather interesting. And while this is all taking place, our pattern is also evolving for the northern mid-Atlantic. Now, this whole evolution here pretty much puts the kibosh on widespread heavy rainstorms that we saw back in March, but it still opens up the potential later on in the season, let's say for remnant tropical uh, rainstorms, okay? But, but for the most part, the type of storms, the type of nor'easters we saw in March, where we got about 10 inches of rain on average uh, for the month, basically that is gone. But because of the stratosphere, featuring these warm pockets here you see these little warm pockets popping up here and there kind of setting up every so often this leads to conditions where it's more favorable for upper level lows to become an issue and so when we look at the forecast we continue to see that theme popping up where you're getting a focus of, of cold anomalies here around the North Pole, which you would expect because we have more direct sunlight, the sun's more active as well right now with an insane amount of sunspots. So you're knocking down the ozone. This all makes sense, right? Then you get down to the mid-latitudes and you see these warm pockets here. And these warm pockets continue to feature the potential for below normal heights and spots uh, over North America and, and throughout much of the mid-latitudes. Now, this is never a one-to-one, -one. meteorology is rarely a one-to-one -one scenario. There's always a lot of, you know, A plus the cosine of B type situation to the fifth power, okay? So you kind of have to think about that in mathematical terms that there is never A plus B. It's always a lot of, of other factors coming in as well. So when we take a look at the upper level pattern, what is the theme that we're seeing here? Take a look at that. <laughs> what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six upper level lows marching across the mid latitudes and creeping into the higher latitudes. But generally, the higher latitudes are pretty much featuring the what's left of the polar vortex, basically starting to disintegrate. And, and your polar and Arctic air mass is all staying locked up in northern uh northern canada and the north pole but where we are we're seeing these upper level lows and they're going to be important because these factors are going to interact with the negative pdl and la nina influence to build this ridge so you have this ridge building you have this upper level low the mid-atlantic will continue to be in this battle between these two features here that's going to be the theme throughout the rest of spring into the summer how do these features interact? And at times the ridge will put, be able to build north. Sometimes it'll shift off to the east. Sometimes the upper level lows and the troughs will end up out here. Sometimes they'll end up back here. And this will all determine from week to week, from day to day, the position of our frontal boundaries over New England and the northern mid-Atlantic and the interaction between the tropical air trying to drive northward and the maritime air trying to drive to the south and east and south and west, should I say. And that is the overall theme of this weather pattern, even as we move into the extended ranges. Again, this is a negative PDO influence, very, very clear. And that negative PDO influence leads to above normal heights here, but then you have this clash here. Now, when you get out to this point 15 days out on the ensemble guidance, you have to understand what the resolution is. And you also have to add in a little bit of, you know, a little bit of salt here into the, into the recipe here. Because as we learned back in the winter, you never want to take any of these solutions verbatim. But this is the overall theme, but not the specific pattern we'll see 15 days out. But what we generally see is a the theme, trough here, trough here. Ridge trying to build up this way, we are caught in between. That's the overall theme. So that takes us into our forecast for this upcoming weekend. Now, currently, right now, it's a bit chilly out there. Granted, 
Uh, we had once again temperatures fall off into the lower to mid 30s for lows, but now that the sun is up, the temperatures are jumping rapidly, and we are in the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, mid to upper 40s along the coast, with scattered cloud cover throughout the region. On our radar and surface map from WeatherTap, you can see high pressure is in control. Rainfall is back here off to the west. Here comes our warm air trying to surge northward. Now, does this mean that we're setting up a wet weekend? Well, no, not exactly. See, right now we have clear skies, high pressures in control. But, see off to the south, cloud cover is starting to increase. As our high pressure system shifts further to the east, what we'll see is this storm with some impressive severe weather here in the Mississippi River Valley and in the Southern Plains. Get used to hearing that quite a bit throughout the rest of the warm season, spring and summer. This low pressure system will continue to lift up towards the Great Lakes. It will tr try to force a warm front northward. That warm front will run right into our high pressure system with maritime air. And you can see it very nicely here in the water vapor satellite picture. There's our trough setting up there's our upper level low you get that ridge right here you get convergence and confluence setting up the high pressure system here here comes the warm air in the subtropical gesture trying to move northward and that clash sets up moisture transport at the mid levels and lower levels of the atmosphere but at the same time at 500 millibars we also have this ridge axis right so what does this mean for us for the weekend? Well, you get plenty of moisture to invade. You get weak frontal genesis because the warm air is trying to win this fight. But this ridge axis that's in place at 500 millibars here also limits lifting. So you get a lot of cloudy skies, but not exactly a lot of rainfall. As we move through the weekend into early next week, the ridge axis starts to shift not only over us, but also starts to push slightly to the east of us, increasing the warm air transport. So what does this look like in terms of our temperatures? Well, at 850 millibars, there goes our polar air mass. Here comes the maritime air mass. It starts to give way, especially at 9 to 25 millibars. So here we are in tomorrow, the maritime air mass trying to hold on. But because of this slight shift to the east, notice our our upper level trough here is out here towards the Canadian Maritimes, right? Because of that slight shift to the east, it allows the boundary to shift to the east into New England. So this allows for warm air to invade on Sunday and Monday. And that is a, basically what we're going to be seeing. And in fact, by Monday and in Tuesday, we're going to be talking about temperatures in the 80s. And I'm not just talking about 81, 82, we could be looking at temperatures in the mid 80s. But at the same time, with that southerly wind is going to keep Long Island cool, about 20 degrees cooler because of the influence from the Atlantic. So eastern Long Island might be 60, Philadelphia might be 88, 87. Okay, so pretty uh, impressive gradient setting up in that respect as well. While that's happening, you can see at 700 millibars, the moisture starts to invade the region very gradually. It is at your precipital water values as well. And so that leads to an increase in cloud cover for tomorrow and for Sunday. So if you're looking for a lot of sunshine this weekend, you're not going to see a lot of it. A lot of mix of sun and clouds. And as far as the rainfall potential, well, not really all that impressive. Again, for today, it's going to be quiet and beautiful. For tomorrow, again, there's that threat for those isolated showers, but the bulk of the forcing and lifting is going to be all focused up to the north here. While that's happening, there's our maritime air mass, and then here comes our tropical air mass. So take a look at this. On Sunday, the warm front gradually lifts towards New England. The best chance for showers is going to be on Sunday morning. There is our warm air winning the fight, pushing temperatures into the 70s, getting close to 80, and then on Monday, that frontal boundary is hanging around the region with, again, some isolated showers. Not really looking for anything that all that impressive, but look at our high temperatures here pushing up into the 80s here, and in some cases, the mid-80s. So some very impressive temperatures taking hold. And again, there's some cooler conditions out here towards the east end of Long Island where uh, we're getting temperatures in the 50s here. I think this will be a little bit warmer, pushing, let's say, about 60 and then 65, and then you can see around 70 here 
especially away from the waters if you're right in the middle of the island. So I'm not seeing any type of major rainfall events, but you know, a pesky shower here and there will be a threat. We will have to watch out for Tuesday, though. We'll get to that in a second. So for today, high pressures in control. Look for high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s on the immediate coast, upper 50s to lower 60s away from the coast. For tonight into tomorrow morning, high pressure begins to exit with sky cloud cover expected. Look for low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. For tomorrow afternoon, the high pressure system continues to shift towards the Gulf of Maine, the warm front begins to approach, clouds increase, and isolated showers possible but not likely. Look for high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s over the interior and along the coast, lower 60s in the Delaware River Valley. On Sunday, the warm front lifts through. We're going to still see this onshore flow, but more from the southeast. There's still going to be a threat for an isolated shower here and there. Temperatures, though, will be much warmer. Look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 40s. High temperatures will range from the mid 60s to lower 70s on Long Island, lower to mid 70s along the rest of the coast, lower to mid 70s over the interior, upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Monday, the warm front remains to the north. Still that threat for an isolated shower, maybe even an isolated rogue thunderstorm. We will have Cape values pushing around 500 joules per kilogram. So there is that threat maybe around the Poconos. Okay, so we'll have to watch out for that. Temperatures will range from the mid to upper 50s for lows. Now high temperatures will range from the mid to upper 70s along the coast, upper 70s to lower 80s over the interior and mid to upper 80s in the Delaware River Valley. Now on Tuesday, we're going to have a very impressive cold front move through with the threat for scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially towards the evening hours. We may have to watch out for an isolated severe thunderstorm out of this. There's still some time to keep an eye on this, and there's quite a bit of data that we still have to study, but there is that threat. Look for low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 50s along the immediate coast, mid to upper 50s everywhere else. High temperatures will range from the lower, should I say mid 60s to lower 70s on Long Island, mid to upper 70s along the rest of the coast, lower to mid 80s around the New York City metro, mid to upper 80s around the Philadelphia metro, and over the interior, upper 70s to lower 80s. So a wide range of temperatures setting up for Tuesday as the cold front moves through, and we're still dealing with that bow of the marine air mass. On Wednesday, a weak trough hangs around the region with sky cloud cover. It could be an isolated shower, but for the most part looking dry. Look for low temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to lower 50s over the northern interior, mid to upper 50s in your suburbs, upper 50s to lower 60s in your urban areas. High temperatures will range from the mid 60s to lower 70s on Long Island, mid to upper 70s along the rest of the coast, mid to upper 70s over the interior, and upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Thursday, a weak trough will pass through with an isolated shower possible. Look for low temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to lower 50s in your suburbs, mid to upper 50s everywhere else. High temperatures will range from the mid 60s to lower 70s on Long Island, upper 70s to lower 80s along the rest of the coast, upper 70s to lower 80s over the interior, and mid to upper 80s in the Delaware River Valley. And on Friday, an area low pressure will approach with increasing cloud cover and showers, possibly a few thunderstorms. Look for low temperatures to range from the upper 50s to lower 60s over the interior and in your suburbs, mid 60s in your urban areas, and high temperatures will range from the lower 70s to mid 80s on Long Island, mid to upper 80s along the coast and in the Delaware River Valley, and lower to mid 80s over the interior. That is your forecast discussion for today. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.